So on the 1st of May, we don't do anything because it's the fair value, what we just calculated was zero. You could have an entry, but it'd just be debit zero, credit zero, so there's no point. What I just want you to have a quick look at, I'm gonna flick back to it, is um, on your slides, with a qualifying hedge, now we're gonna assume that these hedges, you can almost ignore what qualifying hedges are. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna assume they are qualifying and they are all effective. If it is a fair value hedge, any gains or losses go to profit. If it is a, if it is a cash flow hedge, the effective part goes to OCI. So in this case, we need to figure out whether or not we have a cash flow hedge or a fair value hedge and where it changes if it does. Uh, do I have a timeline? Where is it? One, two, three. So what we have is actually both a cash flow and a fair value hedge because we took out the hedge at this point in time. The actual transaction happened at this point in time and we paid for it here. So between the 1st of May and the 31st of May, that is a cash flow hedge because there is no underlying asset or liability, foreign currency asset or liability on our books. There's nothing there. So we have a cash flow hedge. Once we have that account payable on our books, from this point, right the way through, from this point on, we have a fair value hedge. And so that will color how we do the accounting for it. The forward contract goes up in value, so we see that 7,224. A cash flow hedge, you take any gains or losses through to OCI. This is a cash flow portion. So this bit comes through OCI. We've now entered into the transaction and you are allowed to recycle that amount out from OCI and put it against the inventory. Um, if it was a loss, you'd be crediting the OCI and debiting inventory, but in this case, we're debit OCI credit inventory. We then move to the financial year and we debit forward contract 4,600. We credit the foreign currency gain. Because it is now fair value hedge, we take it through profit and loss. We take it through again until we pay it We've now gone backwards and we take it through profit and loss. And at this point, the forward is worth 10,198. We don't actually execute that forward and pay the bank however much money we need to pay them and receive you at 100,000 US. We just close it out with the bank and pay or receive the difference. So in this case, the difference is 10,000. They'll pay us 10,000 and we get rid of the forward contract and it's done. So everything's at fair value, zero. So we have zero value here. Any profit or loss at this point, because it's a cash flow hedge, gets taken through to OCI. Once we move beyond that, we can recycle that out we then take anything, any profit and loss in this point and this point comes through profit and loss and then we finish it all up. And it's probably worthwhile just showing the net effect of all of this, which is in the underlying, so 31st of the 5th, 30th of June and the 30th of July, zero profit, Nothing there, um, sorry, nothing here, nothing the 1st of May. 30th of June, we've made a loss of 5888. We've made a gain here of 1256. So round about there. So in the underlying, 
no profit or loss in that point, a loss of nearly 6,000, a profit of nearly 1,200 or just over 1,200. So overall, on the underlying position, if we hadn't done anything, we would actually be, we would have a loss showing of $4,600. On the hedging item, um, no profit or loss, no profit or loss, so we have zero. We have a gain of 4627, and we have a loss of 1653. So that's around about, so that's around about a $3,000 loss on the hedge. Um, sorry, so we've ended up, hang on, positive, that's negative. So we've lost here, and in this case we're up on the hedge. So the hedge has helped. If we net it all out, if we were to take the net effect of all of this, zero, round about 1,200, negative, round about 400, negative, gives you round about 4,600, sorry, 1,600, I'll just write that all again, minus 1,600. So instead of making a loss of 4,600, we've made a loss of, of $1,600 on this. And if we were to graph it out, uh, so time period zero, we don't, First one, we don't do anything. On the underlying, we make a loss of 5.8. And then we come back slightly. So we've sort of gone flat line. So this is the underlying position. So we've gone across 5.8, come up, ending up at about negative four, uh, four, 4.6. If we're looking at the hedge position, we've gone up and then down a fair bit. So if you looked at kind of the net economic effect of all that, and this is obviously not to scale, very not to scale, um, the idea is that is less volatile than either of these two combined, either of these two in isolation. So we're sort of, if you were to take it, the net economic effect of that, the hedge, it's not been perfect for any, by any stretch of the imagination, but we've sort of lowered the overall impact of any one of these items. We certainly haven't turned this into a money-making situation. But the one thing I just want to point out to why the difference between cash flow hedging and fair value hedging is in this first point in time, if we'd shown the 7,224 as a profit, we'd show something as a profit up here on the hedge, but nothing's happened in the underlying. So we'd show this massive profit and nothing happening here. We've induced volatility into the income statement. Um, you can't show anything on the hedge position if there's nothing going along in the underlying because then you're not netting out against anything. You're just showing one side of it and nothing else is being recognized. So that's the rationale for this number, the 7,224. That's the reason why it goes into OCI and not into profit and loss. Whew. That's, that's a lot for my brain to take in at nearly 8 o'clock on a Friday night. So what we covered, we had a look at uh, why the accounting for financial instruments is problematic. Uh, we looked at types, different types of financial instruments, looked at derivatives and looked at hedging. Um, so I'd urge you with this stuff, I mean, yes, there is some, com oh, there is some complexity to it get comfortable with the underlying situations, get comfortable with what the economically is going on, the actual accounting for it becomes relatively straightforward. On that note, enjoy the rest of your Friday night. Um, I need to sleep, you guys may do as well. Um, enjoy the rest of your Friday night, enjoy your weekend. It is gonna to start to get warm again, which is a good thing. The assignment is due Monday week, from memory, so 
We're going to start, there'll be some announcements about that coming up, but that is something you should definitely start with. My one, two cent, my two cents on that would be, having talked to a couple of people, by this stage, happy, you should have had a look at the annual report for Bridge Connections. Like, having a look at the annual report helps a lot in terms of trying to do it. It's very difficult to try to be doing this before actually looking at what's going on in their annual report. So, if you haven't yet, please do so. Um, if you want to talk to us about the assignment or the essay, sorry, the assignment or the mid-semester exam, please just contact myself or Rob. Um, keep getting up to speed with things because leases and tax start to become quite, I mean, tax definitely conceptually is not easy as well. So it's not like we start to ease up on this. This keeps at a certain level going towards the final exam. So keep in touch with it all. Let's enjoy. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>